Hi, thanks for joining me for another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is Paul Turley. I'm a principal consultant with Pragmatic Works. Today I'm going to talk to you about the ever present question of whether to use import or direct query mode in Power BI and uh, SQL Server Analysis Services and Azure Analysis Services. So why do we have these two different modes? And there are actually more than two now, but uh, the, these are really the two big choices, to import your data and cache it in the data model or to connect live to it at the data source and pass queries through down into the data source. I was teaching uh, a, an advanced level Power BI class over this weekend, a pre-conference for a SQL Saturday. And the question came up, as it often does, he said, we're using direct query mode and there are certain DAX functions that don't seem to be working really well for us. How do we resolve that? And uh, I asked the question, as I always do, why did you choose direct query? Well, we have a lot of data, we have millions of rows, and it seemed like the right thing to do. My advice is that you start with import mode in nearly all cases. If uh, you make the argument that, well, we have a fact table that has tens of millions of rows and a lot of columns, and we think that's going to take up a lot of space, well, first of all, figure out how much memory it's actually going to take. And be very conservative about the columns that you import into your model. So if you, you make a point of only using the columns that you actually need, based on current requirements, you can always add additional columns later on and expand your model. Keep it small. Uh, in iterations, then you can you can expand the, the scope of your data model. And also, you only want to bring in, again, columns that are necessary to join and create relationships from. And you want to avoid um, unique uh, columns, like distinct values that don't compress very well. So if a fact table has a you know a sales key on it or an order ID that you don't need, then don't bring that in because that won't compress very well. So Import mode uh, will allow that data to be compressed in what's called uh, columnar compression. So the Vertipak engine, which is the, the data modeling engine behind Power BI and Analysis Services Tabular, compresses each individual column and it's very, very efficient and it can reduce the memory footprint significantly. If you can keep the total file size under one gigabyte, you're golden. Import mode is going to be your best friend. And then if you actually have a requirement where you need to drill down from a summary table down into a transaction detail table, and you need that data to be up to date, up to the minute, then you can use mixed mode or you can use direct query for that. But that really ought to be an exception to the rule and not the rule. There is such a thing as a composite model where some of the tables are in part mode, some of the tables are direct query. Uh, that's an advanced level capability and it's an advanced level design. I would graduate to that design pattern rather than starting with it. You may find that it's not necessary. We can use partitioning with the incremental refresh feature, which by, by the way is now a pro license feature. You don't have to have premium capacity to use incremental refresh. And you can use that to keep your data up to date you know, within an hour or even a smaller window than that. So you, you don't have to have you know, data that's several days old. Uh, just because you're using import rather than direct query. Uh, check out my uh, previous recording about Power BI storage modes. That'll provide a little bit of context on this topic. And as always, keep watching. Thanks for joining Azure every day.